New mini box, Flames of the Heart. We're gonna go over decks, combos, replays, best way to play, concepts. Let's go. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at him. Let's go. Starting off with Gokies. Now, this is a deck concept from a member of the Discord. We possibly have our own at the end of this review. We're gonna talk about the Ultra Rare Goki Suprex. Now, it is my goal to make you understand the new cards, not read them for you, go through every single card. I'm gonna talk about what's relevant, what's good. Goki on normal will special summon a Goki from the hand, and when sent from the field to the grave, it will search for a Goki. Now, all of the Gokis have that effect when sent from the field to the grave, search for a Goki as long as it's not searching for itself. So Suprex cannot search itself, but it could search for another Goki when sent from the field to the grave. Now we have Goki Riscorpio. If you control no monsters, it's level five. You can normal summon this card without tributing. Same thing, search for a Goki when sent from the field to the grave. But the Goki combo we really want to focus on is Suprex with the Twist Cobra. Twist Cobra says, Tribute a Goki, quick effect during either player's turn, to gain attack equal to the tributed Goki, and that will also trigger the effect to search for a Goki. So the main thing you want to do is get Twist Cobra and Suprex on the field by activating Suprex, special summon the Twist Cobra, and then when the Suprex is sent to the graveyard to boost up the Twist Cobra, it becomes 3,400. Then the Suprex being sent to the grave will search for another Twist Cobra. Then if something happens to the Twist Cobra, you search for another Suprex. So it's never ending as soon as you initially get Suprex and Twist Cobra onto the field, 3,400 during either player's turn until the end phase. I'll show the combo to you in the replay. We're going to set this and then we're going to flip this face down. I'll also turn off the hover since we know what's going on. Then we're going to activate the Ballista Squad, sending this to pop a card in the field. And we're going to search for the Suprex. Okay, then we're going to draw a card. Then we're going to Suprex Special Summon the Twist Cobra. And then we're going to tribute the Suprex to make the Twist Cobra 3400 attack. And that's going to trigger the Suprex to search for, let's say, another Twist Cobra. And then something can happen to the Twist Cobra where we will activate to search for a Suprex. And then, so we draw for our turn. Then we normal summon the Mass Chameleon. And we could make, what do we want to make? We want to make, could make a start a Spark Dragon. So we could special summon the Suprex. Now Suprex effects negated. And then you're going to synchro these two into a start a spark dragon and that's the play now here are some other goki cards they're probably not as good the goki cage match it's not good at all i'd say you have to destroy three monsters by battle then you could special summon any amount of gokis at the end of the battle phase from your deck or hand it's gonna be way too hard to get this going we have goki iron claw during the damage step you could discard this card to boost up a goki by plus 500 so if you want to with the cobra you could tribute the suplex to then grab a claw to discard to boost up your twist cobra up to 3900 after becoming 3400 now we got headbutt discard a goki to special summon this onto the field to boost up a goki by plus 800 now, while it's not that great, we do like the effect of searching for the Suprex or the Twist Cobra when sent from the field to the grave. So even if the other Gokis are not that good, it still might be worth to play it just to make the Cobra and Suprex more consistent. Let's talk about some synergy. We want our monster to be sent from the field to the graveyard, so Ballista Squad, very good, tribute your monster. Or a free-to-play replacement would be Enemy Controller, get your monster into the grave. And now when your monsters are in the grave and searching, you can activate Chameleon. You can special summon a Goki from the grave on the summon of Chameleon because you must summon a monster with zero defense from your grave and they're all at zero defense. So special summon your Goki onto the field. It's negated, but then you synchro because Chameleon is also a tuner. When you synchro, even though the effect is negated on the field, it's gonna trigger the Goki effect to search for another Goki. If you wanna play a mill deck, play Block Dragon. Block Dragon could banish three earth monsters to summon onto the field. And then when it's sent to the graveyard, it's not really gonna have an effect with the Gokis because all of the Gokis are warriors, but it could just work with getting a Block Dragon onto the field. 
Even better, you want to play Sound Swordsman. You can special summon this by tributing a Goki, which will trigger its effect to search for another Goki. And then Sound Swordsman during either player's turn on the standby phase will gain 500 attack permanently. Also, once per turn, negate a spell. Also, when destroyed, summon a bigger Sound Swordsman from the deck. That might be a great way to play it. But otherwise, here's a concept deck similar to what we saw earlier. We're playing the extra Gokis just for the searching. We got lots of Chameleons. It's just a concept, not an optimized way to play. Some Synchros. So you got the 3,400 3, attack button boost with the twist cobra and some synchro plays and ways to tribute new shuranui cards in already top tier deck these are the four new cards we'll start off with we're not going to talk about the monster because it's really bad but we got the synchro level five within the top tier version of shuranui you can't summon this and you do not even want to summon it it's basically the big question how do you even summon it so don't even look at it you could read it yourself otherwise it's not good let's talk about what's good the two spells, both of them are pretty good. Both of them are super rare. Now, Shuranui style Solemn. What does this do? It's a continuous spell. It does two things. It could banish a zombie from the graveyard, or it could banish a zombie from your field. Now, we all know what the Shuranui is. They all have the effect when being banished. For example, Solitaire when banished will summon a, a zombie that is banished onto the field. Squire will draw a card, discard a card. Spirit Master will destroy a card in the field. That's the main thing to do with this, but... There's a very interesting situation with this card and Solitaire. They are connected. Solitaire, you may not even know this. I didn't. Its other effect is if you have a Shuranui-style synthesis on the field, instead of summoning one banished monster, you summon two banished monsters. Well, the Shuranui-style Solemn, its name while on the field is Synthesis. So you get that special effect of Solitaire. So whether your solitaire is on the field or in the grave, you're going to use the solemn to banish the solitaire and then summon two monsters that are banished instead of just one because of it being a synthesis on the field. Also, you get to send a, a zombie from your deck to the graveyard if you banish a zombie on the field. So it's quite the setup to make it work optimally. Now, better than the solemn, the best new Shurinui card is Ghost Meets Girl, a Shurinui story. It's a quick play. And in order to even activate it during your turn or your opponent's turn, your opponent must have a monster on the field. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a monster. Your opponent just needs at least one monster on the field to activate this quick play. Quick play, discard a zombie, any zombie, to special summon a Shuranui with a different name than the zombie you discarded. Now, the best way to use this card is simply summoning a Solitaire or a Spectral Sword on the field. Usually you lose if you do not have a way to get to Spectral Sword. Well, Solitaire gets the Spectral Sword, and the Ghost Meets Girl is another way to just get to the Spectral Sword. Now, a more aggressive way to play this card could be to summon a Shuranui Samurai. Normally, Samurai is not good because you need a setup in the grave to use its effect to become plus 600 attack and banish any monster it battles with. It was only good in the Grass that's Greener version. Well, maybe it's back because you'll discard a zombie to then special summon the Samurai. Then your Samurai becomes 2400 by banishing that zombie then banish any monster that you battle with. So just this is your turn one. You have the Ghost Meets Girl and the Ballista Squad, and then you're going to activate this, tribute this, special summon a Solitaire onto the field, and you're set. You are set. You got Ballista Squad, get Poppin, and then you're gonna make your Shogun Saga next turn just from this. Just from this. So these two cards equal a Shogun Saga if you special summon a Solitaire on their turn. And if you want to get spicy, you probably don't want to do this, but if you want to get spicy and you want to play aggressive, you discard the Spectral Sword, you summon a Samurai. And then if they go in on you, you could banish the Spectral Sword to banish their monster if you wanted to make an aggressive play instead of a defensive play with Solitaire. So that's something. Here's a quick concept build from Assault Mode within the Discord. He's using two Ghost and one of the Solemn. And overall, just the Ghost Meets Girl will possibly be used in top tier decks. And the Solemn cards, a bit more situational, might be used at one in some Shuranui. Evil Soars! Now, this deck is a meme right now, but this picture basically explains exactly what the deck does. You have Econ and Ballista to tribute your Evo tiles, and your Evo tiles are working with your Diplo, your Evil Soar. You have the spell and the 
Evo Tiles to basically get your Diplo onto the field to destroy a back row. And your Evo Pierce, when you special summon an Evil Sword from your deck, will destroy any card in the field. So basically, tribute to special to destroy back row Diplo or any card with Evo Price. But you'll probably need to put an Invoked in this deck to even have a win condition. Otherwise, the new card is just Evo Force. You tribute an Evo Tile to special summon the Evil Sore, which will trigger the effect of Evo Price to destroy any card in the field, or trigger the Diplo to destroy a back row card in the field. The deck's a meme, but you know, something like this will work. Ultra rare and super rare cards not tied to a specific deck type. Oh my Jesus. Gizmek Yata. The Gleaming Vanguard. This is going to be used with so many different combos. Will it be used in a top tier deck? Maybe. But a Cogworthy deck? Definitely. There are so many different cards you could use this. Why is this such a versatile card? This is the only Gizmek Yata card to be out in Duel Links. Basically, what its effects are is you normal summon a monster. Then you could tribute that monster to special summon this card. Then you could perform an additional summon. Then, if this card is tributed after it's special summoned, you could gain 2,050 life. But we don't care so much about that. We care about what's good with tributing a normal summon monster. Well, Christrons, you want your Thisfern and Smiger in the grave. So, for example, you could tribute a Thisfern to special summon the Gizmek Yata. You could banish the Thisfern to grab a Sulfonir. Then you could tribute summon Sulfonir over the Yata to then gain life. But you probably won't do that combo. You might do the full Christron combo to summon a Citri. It's just a great way to get a card in the graveyard. Now, what are great ways to get cards in the grave? What are good cards? Sangin and Witch of the Black Forest. Tribute over. Search for a Tuner. Now, there is a restriction with Yata that I did not mention. When you perform that additional summon, you could only special summon monsters with the same type as that additionally summoned monster. So, with Sangin and Witch, you will search for a Tuner, summon that Tuner alongside the Yata. And when you Synchro, the Synchro has to be the same type as the Tuner you additionally normal summoned. Also works with the Suprex. You could search for a Goki, then summon a Goki. It could tribute a Psychic Ace, destroy any card in the field. You could tribute over a Rallying Karibo, draw a card when tributed. You could tribute over the Charging Gaia when tributed. You could add a Black Luster Soldier Monster from your deck to your hand. And that's what makes it better than Tricky, because it's very similar to Tricky. Tricky, discard from the hand to Special Summon. And then, of course, you haven't used your normal summon yet, so that would be your additional summon. But the great thing is, it's like Tricky but you tribute the monster on the field to get the on-field effect of being tributed, which you see all these cards have. Tatsu Necro. This is a level three tuner zombie. It uses your hand to synchro, so it's a one card synchro just with your normal summon. You normal summon, use your hand to synchro, and what you could use, you could possibly make a red-eye zombie necro because you could only summon a zombie. Also, itself and the material you use will get banished, so no graveyard effects. You can make a zombie necro dragon, which steals zombies when you destroy a zombie by battle. You could make a sun saga with a level seven in your hand, but then it has no effect, essentially. It's just 3,500. You could make a Yoko, maybe with thunder dragons or vendors with a level six in your hand. There's gonna be some interesting ideas to make with the Tatsu Necro. You tell me, what's your idea with the Tatsu Necro? Get that Synchro Summon. Lord Gaia the Fierce Knight. If your opponent controls a monster, you could special summon this if you control no monsters. Basically, it's just a way to special summon while still being able to use your normal summon. It's a Gaia monster, so it will trigger the Spiral Spear Strike skill to add a Spiral Spear Strike from your deck to your hand. It becomes 3,000 attack if your opponent special summons a monster until the end of the turn. It's not a very good card, but you know, maybe there'll be something to do with it in the future. The Spiral Spear Strike will make your fusion a great monster for piercing and also drawing two and discarding a card after you deal piercing damage. And to summon this card, you need a Guy of the Fierce Knight monster plus a Dragon Sight monster. So it's another monster that you could use to help summon your Dragon Champion. Beast of the Pharaoh. If this card is sent to the grave for a Synchro Summon, you could target a level four or lower zombie in your graveyard, special summon the target. Oh my Jesus, what zombie are we gonna summon? There's so many great zombies. Itself, just summon itself. Use it for the Synchro, then summon itself from the grave onto the field. If not, you could use it in the Shiranui deck with the level two Spectral Sword, make a level five Shiranui, which is brand new. Then you could special summon the Spectral Sword back onto the field, you know, make a level seven after that. Or we could use it with Wielder. 
Wielder could be special summon onto the field as a level 3 tuner, as long as you just control the Beast of the Pharaoh. Since it is an Earth monster, it could help you summon a Goyo Guardian or a Barkion. Goyo Guardian steals monsters when destroying by battle, and Barkion will negate traps. And what does the effect of special summoning have to do with these? Nothing. It just uh, special summons itself alongside your Goyo or your Natura Barkion to make further plays and or protect your life points after doing so. So we'll see what are the good ways to use Beast of the Pharaoh. Next up, Hidden Gems. Eagle Booster, so many fools thought this card was no good because it requires Link Summoning. They thought it requires Link Summoning. Basically, if you have no monsters in your main monster zones, you target a monster and that monster is unaffected by card effects besides its own card effects. So how people were using this in the TCG because they got a small brain is they would summon a monster in the extra monster zone. If you don't know what that is, a Duel Links player, don't worry about it. Probably never coming to Duel Links. And then their extra deck monster zone would be unaffected by other card effects. Well, in Duel Links, we have to be smarter to use this card. You could only use it on your opponent's monsters while you control no monsters. So what are you going to do? You're possibly going to use it in a Yosin Ju deck because it's a deck that you normally will not have monsters on your field to even use this card. Let's look at the top tier decks where this will have an impact. Now, against Kristrons, their cards like this, Vernon Smiger, they like targeting their Scrap Recycler to destroy it, then summon a tuner from the deck. Not if you activate Eagle Booster. Eagle Booster onto the Scrap Recycler, it's unaffected by the Smiger. it will not be destroyed, you negated the Citri Summon. Now you're playing Elmond Sabers, they summon Invoker, they grab Invocation, they activate Invocation, you're gonna activate Eagle Booster onto the Invoker, unaffected by the Invocation, negate the Fusion Summon. Blue Eyes White Dragon, they're gonna summon an Effect Monster, they're gonna activate Sage to send that Effect Monster to the Grave to summon a Blue Eyes, negate. Target the monster, it's unaffected by the Sage. No good. Cyber Dragons are gonna activate Overflow, which it's not a cost to banish their monster on the field. You're gonna activate the Eagle Booster, their monster is unaffected by the Overflow, will not get banished. No popping. You're gonna play against Masked Heroes, they're gonna go in for lethal, they're gonna activate Mass Change, you're gonna chain Eagle Booster onto their monster that they're trying to use Mass Change on. No good, unaffected, not being sent to the grave. Just like that, yeah. Quick disclaimer, most of the combos I said that were negated by the Eagle Booster, Lance could potentially do that too besides the Sage and the Christrons, which are not going to really be that much. If you can't tell, the card is not good, but people said it was useless. Not completely useless. It does have an effect on top tier decks, but it's not a good card. I'm not telling you to use it, just telling you ways it could be used. Otherwise, Lance is much, much better.